Have you ever sent a message, typed in a password, or paid for something online and just assumed it would arrive safely on the other side? We do this every day without much thought. We trust that our photos, emails, and bank details won't be intercepted or read by strangers. But the internet is not a private place by default. It's more like a massive public highway where information is constantly moving in all directions. So how does your data stay secret while traveling across such an open space? The answer is encryption. And today we will talk about that right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, encryption is the art of turning readable information into something that looks like complete nonsense, unless you have the right key to unlock it. It's one of the most important technologies keeping modern digital life functioning. Without encryption, online banking would be impossible, private messages wouldn't exist, and passwords would be dangerously exposed. Yet despite how essential it is, Encryption often feels mysterious or overly technical. In reality, the idea behind it is surprisingly simple. To understand encryption, it helps to start with a basic concept, plain text and ciphertext. Plain text is the readable data you create, your message, your photo, your login details, Cipher text is what that data becomes after encryption. Imagine writing a note and then scrambling every letter so it becomes unreadable. That scrambled version is cipher text. Anyone can see it, but only someone who knows how to unscramble it can understand what it says. Humans have been encrypting information for thousands of years. One of the earliest known examples comes from ancient Rome. Julius Caesar famously used a method now called the Caesar cipher. He would shift each letter in a message by a fixed number of places in the alphabet. To anyone who didn't know the shift, the message looked meaningless. To someone who did, it was easy to decode. While this method is laughably insecure by modern standards, it demonstrates the basic idea that still applies today, secrecy through transformation. Modern encryption works on the same principle, but instead of shifting letters, it uses advanced mathematics and algorithms. An algorithm is simply a set of rules for transforming data. When you encrypt something, an algorithm takes your plain text and combines it with a key, a piece of information that controls how the transformation happens. The result is ciphertext that can't be reversed without the correct key. There are two main types of encryption used today, symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption is the simpler of the two. It uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt data. If you and a friend both have the same secret key, you can lock and unlock messages between each other. This type of encryption is fast and efficient, which makes it ideal for encrypting large amounts of data, such as files stored on your device or data sent during a video call. The problem with symmetric encryption is key sharing. If you need the same key to lock and unlock data, how do you safely give that key to someone else without exposing it? If an attacker gets the key, the encryption becomes useless. This challenge led to the development of asymmetric encryption, which solves the key sharing problem in a clever way. Asymmetric encryption uses two different keys, a public key and a private key. The public key can be shared with anyone. The private key is kept secret. When someone encrypts data using your public key, only your private key can decrypt it. This means people can send you secure information without ever needing to exchange a secret beforehand. It's like having a mailbox that anyone can drop a letter into, but only you can open. This system is what makes secure communication on the internet possible. 
When you visit a website that starts with HTTPS, your browser and the website use asymmetric encryption to safely exchange keys. Once that secure connection is established, they usually switch to symmetric encryption for speed. This combination gives you both security and efficiency without you ever noticing it happening. Encryption isn't just about hiding data from hackers. It's also about protecting data from being altered. Many encryption systems include something called integrity checks. These checks allow the recipient to verify that the data hasn't been changed during transmission. If even a single character is altered, the system can detect it. This is crucial for things like software updates and financial transactions, where even tiny changes can have serious consequences. Another important concept is hashing, which is often confused with encryption. Hashing transforms data into a fixed length string of characters, but unlike encryption, it cannot be reversed. Hashing is commonly used to store passwords. When you create a password, the system doesn't store the actual password, it stores a hash of it. When you log in, your password is hashed again and compared to the stored hash. This way, even if someone steals the database, they don't get your actual passwords. Encryption plays a massive role in everyday devices, even beyond the internet. Your smartphone uses encryption to protect your data if it's lost or stolen. When you set a passcode or use fingerprint or face recognition, you're controlling access to an encrypted storage system. Without the correct authentication, the data remains scrambled and unusable. Messaging apps rely heavily on encryption as well, especially those that offer end-to-end -end encryption. In end-to-end -end encryption, messages are encrypted on your device and only decrypted on the recipient's device. Even the company running the service can't read the messages. This design protects conversations from hackers, surveillance, and data breaches, but it also raises debates about privacy, security, and law enforcement access. Despite how strong encryption is, it's not magic. Poor implementation can make even the best algorithms vulnerable. Weak passwords, outdated software, and careless handling of keys can all undermine encryption. That's why cybersecurity isn't just about having encryption. It's about using it correctly. A strong lock doesn't help if the key is left under the doormat. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.